Hey everybody. Yes, I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. <clears throat> but I have been reassessing things. And a couple years ago, when I started this, I was really working on another level besides talking to you guys. As most of you know that have followed me this whole time, I've been working mostly with Gaia. That's why I came. That's my number one reason for being here. But all of you are in skin suits, and those skin suits are a part of Gaia. So I have reached out to number one, see if I could find some people to talk to that maybe understood the weirdness that I am. I don't know if that helped, if that worked much, but at least I've met a lot of friends that were willing to talk, uh, period. But <clears throat> over the last few months, this last six months or so, uh, the work that a lot of groups, a lot of people have been out there doing have been kind of defractaling the rest of the lower vibrations of the third dimension. Okay? In that process, and that's what I was doing. Because what I came to do was pretty odds and ends of some of the deepest vibrations. And all I can do is say, kind of collect them all, put them back into the one. Uh, so we're defractaling, whereas going down to the third dimension was fractaling, was breaking down the one into tinier and tinier and tinier perspectives and then collecting them in tiny little groups and, and that's a life or a, a life of some kind or a part of a life and that was a consciousness could take that little group of tiny little fractals of the all that is and put it together within this game and have a perspective that was very very different from the perspective that we have when we're outside of this game as the gods that we are a part of the all that is. As Gaia comes out of this, this all of these vibrations come back together from all of these tiny little fractal parts that have been used by people in the game, put them back together in the oneness. That's uh, Falcor saying hi to everybody. As she moves up, back to oneness and eventually out of the game altogether. Of course, her rate of doing it is much, 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 much slower than yours is because she is planning. But, hey, shush, shush. Uh, but still, in, and it is very complex. All of this is extremely complex creating of this game fractaling down and coming back up. Now in the third dimension I told you guys that it was based on fear and going down all the way to the lowest vibrations everything was pretty much based on the vibration of fear which led ultimately to deep despair and uh, anger then fear deep despair and that was the lowest end of the third dimension. Now I've told you guys that since that was done that was completed the third dimension, there were more planets that have volunteered to play this game and have now that are like uh, planet Earth. So Gaia is coming up and out and there are now many, many more entities that have volunteered to be planets that are going even further down into that fractaline that what you would call second dimension or first dimension. In reality, these are not these are not uh, numbered at all. These are just vibrations in the middle of an infinity, um, an infinite amount of, of vibrations that humans in linear time space have decided to call third, fourth, fifth dimensions. Affixing numbers to them. I think this would be smarter if we did uh, name them rather than give them numbers. But nonetheless, there are other planets that have already gone deeper into other dimensions that are more uh, fractal down beyond despair, what you would call despair. There are words now that the entities on those planets have got new words for those experiences, words that you are not aware of them and experiences that you aren't aware of and you can't even imagine. And this will keep going forever. That's how games are created and made. Hold on, guys. Come on. 
Sorry about that. That was a commercial break. <laughs> but <clears throat> to get down to uh, the third dimension, I told you all that the, that the masculine energies were basically responsible for the um, primarily they were the ones that were very, very instrumental in getting to those third dimensional vibrations. <clears throat> they were the last step, so to speak. And the reason for that is because the planet is a feminine planet and it took the masculine in undivine form, fractals of the divine, in such a way that created this contrast that created these lower third, third dimensional vibrations. And it is masculine, not men, masculine energies. In order for that to happen, the female, the feminine, um, divine feminine energies had to give way. Uh, they had to allow themselves to, the, the divine feminine had to allow itself to be fractaled down into what you would, most people call the undivine feminine, in order to lower the energy level, because it's a feminine planet, to allow the masculine energies to take that fractal down to that lower level of the third dimension, what, what we call the third dimensional, and those up until um, that point, the lowest, most intense um, fractals of the all that is that has ever been created before. Now that has been usurped, now they've gone even lower, but at the time when Gaia went to the third dimension, and those lowest levels of the third dimension, that was the lowest it's ever been done. Now, as she comes back up out of that, which is what she has done, she is now out of the third dimension. You all are. You went from the third dimension, living normally in the third dimension, most every single one of you that's listening to me, you spent most of your life in the third dimension, and then about 2012-ish, some people went there 2008-ish, to 2016-ish, but the average was 2012. In 2012, uh, the planet pulled out of the lowest vibrations of the third dimension. Now, that does not mean that you cannot go into deep despair or anyone or anger or fear. You still can do it, but the collective that you go to whenever you do that at any moment, uh, and it's only done in moments now, you can't go there and just exist for days on end. But you can blurp down there onto those vibrations. But the timelines that you create when you do that have uh, not very many full-blown consciousnesses that are running around next to you. It'll look like the world is running around just like it always has been. But in reality, the energies of that collective that are around you, when you drop down into those lower vibrations, are no longer Gaia. Those are other consciousnesses or yourself who is recreating the trees, the flowers, the person that's checking you out at the gas station, and any other consciousnesses that want to throw some energy your way to have that moment. Because you are a creator God and you are allowed to do whatever you want, period. But that doesn't mean that you get to drag anybody else with you. Gaia has chosen to leave those vibrations. She's no longer accessible on those vibrations. So even if you're you're standing on the planet and it looks like guy is there she is no longer at that level so anytime you go into deep despair pretty intense anger or fear or worry anything that's around you is not Gaia related the only thing that's Gaia related at that point is your skin suit which is why Gaia likes for all of the human skin suits to go with her in this transformation but she will not force anyone to do so so there is a separateness on those timelines. These timelines are the timelines that will eventually create uh, into the world scenarios. Everything from a virus to zombies to or the rapture to alien invasion. There's many, many timelines. The Gaia, it will look like Gaia is there. But in reality, those are all consciousnesses that decide that they want to, they want to experience that kind of end of the world scenario, they all agree, put their energies together, and recreate what looks like the experience that is Gaia, whereas Gaia is already gone. 
So we've come out of the majority, or me, I have over and finished that up over the last few months, which is why, um, which is why you haven't seen me as much, because I had a lot of stuff to, like, finish up as I left that behind. Now we're going into the fourth dimension, and she's working, Guy is going up through the fourth dimension. As I've told you guys before, a good portion of Gaia, the majority of Gaia is already in fifth dimension. Some of her has already moved on to above that now. But there is a small bit that's still left in the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is ruled by judgment. And at the beginning, as you step over from the fifth dimension right into the fourth dimension, judgment is, I would say, in the fifth dimension, uh, judgment is not judgment. There's no judgment in the fifth dimension. It's more choice without judgment. It's more like this. <clears throat> well, um, I love the sunrise and I love the sunset, and they're both beautiful. I think I like sunrise a little bit better. That's that's the kind of judgment you have in the fifth dimension. It is a, more of a choice judgment. You do have judgment, but judgment is a big word that can mean a lot of things. I think it's in the Bible and many other places where it says, Judge not, lest ye yourself be judged. There's also places in the Bible where it says, be careful how you judge others, because that's how God's going to judge you. This is a part of the process that Fourth Dimension created. At the beginning, there was a judgment, and it started being tweaked and tweaked and tweaked with amnesia. And that this is where the feminine ruled. This is the judgment is what feminine ran, whereas masculine ran fear and anger in the third dimension to create that women are the ones, mas uh, feminine is the one that rules judgment. So as we go through the fourth dimension, what I'm seeing a lot is women are really struggling. Most of the men that I've talked to over time have done extremely well. They're still listening to me and talking to me. They were able to work through uh, letting go of fear and worry, anger, and um, they basically defractal those energies, added it back into the Divine Masculine. Now we're going into uh, the Undivine Feminine, defractaling into the Divine Feminine. And this is, uh, we're finding it to be quite a struggle. That uh, women or people who, who live their lives in more of a feminine aspect, are really, really fighting defractaling back into the Divine Feminine. They do not want to let it go. Uh, they do not want to let go of judgment. Uh, they absolutely will right fight and right fight and right fight to be able to judge. Uh, and they judge everything. Now this does not mean that men do not do this as well. They do. I'm talking about feminine energies. It's in charge of this. That's the original drop. So in order to get up through the fifth dimension, you have to be able to start, just like I said uh, two years ago, if you want to get out of anger, you have to stop being afraid. You have to stop worrying. You must stop it. And you have to learn, if you want to get out of fourth dimension, you have to stop judging. And it has to become a thing that you accept everyone and everything is simply a different perspective. There is no reason to judge harshly anything, anyone, anytime, ever. All of this is a game and it's simply a different perspective. Until you do that, until you begin to practice it, until you stop looking at everyone around you, no matter what it is, in such a way that you are fascinated with their experience rather than saying, oh, that's the wrong way to be, then you cannot get out of the fourth dimension. Again, I say this, there's nothing wrong with staying in the fourth dimension. In the fourth dimension, judgment is everywhere. Uh, <clears throat> and this will be also true for those that want to stay in the fourth dimension. There will also, they can recreate a continuation of a version of Gaia as Gaia leaves under those circumstances too, as they play out uh, whatever scenario they wish to play out. But in order to get out of the fourth dimension, now I'm going to begin to harp on 
the judgment thing. Now this is tricky. You've got to make choices. Choices are based on judgment. How do you make choices to get to 5D without judging? It's the way that you judge. It's not a matter of your way is right, my way is wrong, or vice versa. It is a, a choice about how you'd like to step through, not judging or having anything to do with how anybody else does it. There are no right answers here. There is only individual experience. Every individual, every part of the all that is, every God consciousness has the right and the ability to, to do this experience however they want. And I've told you guys that a long time ago, long time ago. And until you understand that and stop judging those around you, then you will not get out of the fourth dimension. As a matter of fact, as long as you're judging others harshly and saying, well, they should be doing it this way, or they're doing that wrong, or how dare they treat me like this, or they're bad for the earth, or they're bad for the world, or they should be eating this, or they should be treating people like that, until you stop that, you won't even go very far up through the fourth dimension. And as Gaia removes her energy more and more into the fifth dimension, you simply do not have the vibration of Gaia to sustain your skin suit. Your skin suit will get more and more uncomfortable. More and more. That's the reason why I've had so much trouble the last six months, is because I've been messing around with vibrations that were no longer connected to Gaia as I was collapsing them and putting them back into the all that is. Okay? Same thing is true as Gaia pulls up and these lower vibrations of fourth dimension, the energies of Gaia will no longer be there. There will just be kind of a shadowy version of you recreating them which will have not have the comfortable feeling of having Mama Gaia attached to your skin suit. Okay? Alright, this is just the first video on the beginning of this discussion of, of uh, judgment. Just like I did a bunch of videos on, on fear and being happy. Uh, now I've decided, and I, and I had to think about that for a while. I didn't know if I wanted to go into the next stage with these videos or just drop it, walk away, and let the 500 stand. And, and But after uh, much meditation over the last two weeks, I've decided to go ahead and continue on on this next level. So we're going to go into the fourth dimension and judgment and see if I can help you all learn to let go of it. For anyone that's going down into deep despair and fear, uh, yeah, get out of that as quickly as you can every moment. It's no big deal if you fall into it. Catch it as soon as possible. You're still going to go into the fourth dimension being very aware of how you're feeling at all times. Because you're a creator God and you're creating rapidly. So you have to be aware of the message that you're sending to the law of attraction and what you're creating so that you can go in the direction that you want. That whole conscious, be a conscious creator, I don't know, the leaders have a special word for it anyway, but I want you to do that, you've got to be, become aware. Now the better you are at this, you will get flashes, visions, knowingness um, coming in if you will pay attention, your amnesia will start to break. If you accept these out-of-body experiences, these people talking to you out of the blue, these magical creatures in the in your living room, uh, all of these things that are a part of fifth dimension. Nobody, let me assure you, no one here is spending any amount of time in fifth dimension. You are at best flashing there. You are not seeing anybody else there at all. You cannot do that. You will be at times having flashes of being in the fifth dimension, which means you're raising your vibration, matching the fifth dimension, then coming back down. You will not be watching others in the fifth dimension. You will be joining the fifth dimension and then coming out of it and joining and coming out of it. The more you honor 
those moments. Don't question them. Go with them with your knowingness that that is real and yeah, you recognize that. It will lead you to less and less amnesia and longer periods, split seconds, minute moments of experiencing the fifth dimension. But you cannot look around you guys and look out there and say, oh yeah, that person's in the fifth dimension and that one's in the fifth dimension. It's absolutely impossible. That's, that's not accurate at all. Uh, remember, your job is you and only you. Everybody else's experience is their business. It's none of your business. They are all gods as you are and they will handle what they're doing. They're very capable of it. Every single one of them. Every plant, every animal, every molecule in the air, every child, every baby, every adult, every whale and dolphin. They know what they're doing. They are powerful gods in their own right. Your job is you. You're the only one that can do it. And when you have to keep that responsibility to someone else or something else or lay blame somewhere else, then you don't get done and you never will be. Like they do say, and this is accurate, you are the savior you've been waiting for. Don't look anywhere else. You are the savior you've been waiting for. And you're the only one that can get the job done. And that's been the truth all along. None of the other saviors could save you. Only you could save you. They could give you hints. I can give you help. I can answer questions. But ultimately, you have to do it yourself. And what anybody else is doing is really none of your business. There's nothing you can do about it anyway. Okay? Alrighty then. If y'all haven't noticed, I took the ads off. Um, I think a year and a half in, I haven't made any money, and I'm sure it's just annoying for y'all to have to listen to ads. So I just took them off. If y'all want to help me, support me in a financial way, there are links down below um, that that you can donate to if that's if that's what you'd like to do. And I very much appreciate that support. Um, yeah. So subscribe. Do I still need to say all of that stuff if I don't have ads? I think it becomes obvious. Uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of that, but I just wanted to let you know that I did take them off for a reason. And uh, yeah, I also have opened a bit shoot account. Uh, I like that energy over there on that place really well. Uh, and I'm going to work on the Patreon more, and then I'm going to put together a store where I am going to start putting up uh, Stephanie and I are going to be putting up books. She's going to be putting up books on the magical creatures. And I am going to be transcribing my videos and improving them on different subjects and putting them down into download form, uh, written word. So uh, I am going to go ahead and do that. I know you guys have heard me before. I'm not sure why anybody needs that, but I'm going to do it. And uh, I'll be working on that for the next probably six months or so. All right, that's it, guys, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, I love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll uh, check you later.